you want to put a new kitchen in your home or investment property? Yeah, you do. That's why you're watching this video. Well, I'm about to show you how I transformed this kitchen from looking like this to what you see behind me for under five grand. Keep watching to find out exactly how. Now I bought this place back in late 2019 with the specific intention to renovate it for a profit. You know, as soon as I walked in the door of this, like for the first private inspection that we had here, I knew that this wall of the wall where exactly where I'm standing, where it was, needed to come out because it just divided up the room way too much between the kitchen and living area. And we really wanted to achieve by bringing this house into the 21st century. So as much as this isn't to do with the kitchen renovation, I think it directly relates to the whole overall feel of the kitchen. So my first job on the list was taking out both the kitchen and the wall in between. Now this was actually a lot of fun. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever done any kind of demolition work before, but as long as you're safe about it, please don't just take a sledgehammer to anything. Make sure you actually understand what you're knocking down. So we've got everything checked out first. My friend James and I, James, again, thank you so much, man. You've been helping so much with this. Uh, he came around, he helped me with so much of the demolition on this project. Hey, James, you got the hammer? And I, I'm a big advocate for getting to know the neighbors of your investment properties. And we kind of took it like a, a step further with this. Actually got some of the neighbors around that heard all the commotion and actually got them to do some of the demo with us. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood! Now just FYI, I'm not recommending this, all right? This just happened to work out really well in terms of guests across the road and the next door were actually really good people. It was a great way to actually get to know them. But otherwise, once everything was demoed, we kind of hit one point with this wall where we didn't actually know if we needed to put a hanging beam in place. I didn't know this, I'm not a builder. So I got my brother, Nathan. Again, thank you so much, Nathan, for coming in. And Nathan actually is a qualified chippy. Now, and this is also not a complete flat roof, but it's like, there's not too much of a pitch to it. So crawling all the way from the manhole down the other end of the roof up to this side, you don't want to do it. And, and I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to do that if I didn't have to leave it. Because we've already taken out all of the length of the wall, he basically just said, why don't I cut more of a hole, you're going to get it plastered up anyway. Poke your set up there, turns out she's all happens, we didn't need a hanging bit. So thank you very much, Nathan. So once we knew we were all good with the walls, it was time to get everything plastered up. Now one tip that I will give you, if you're actually taking out a wall and doing a kitchen at the same time, and you have wooden floors, use the wood from underneath the cabinets that you take out in the kitchen. because. No one's ever going to notice what colour the wood is underneath the kitchen cabinets, but what they will notice is the colour of the wood that you've actually just replaced where there once was a wall. So we took out, actually it's kind of ironic now anyway because we ended up doing Japan black, which is a whole other story. The, so after we started putting the wood back in the floors, the, the walls, the ceiling, everything was plastered, flushed, it was all starting to look like a little bit more of a room again. Something I unfortunately learned the hard way was stepping on a nail, clear the site. If you're working with wood and all this kind of stuff, it was just daft. And also, take some antiseptic with you when you're renovating. I only had vodka to put on there, so it's probably, yeah, it was stupid. I'm not gonna make any excuses for that. But yeah, don't step on nails. Now, and whenever I'm putting a kitchen together, there is three people I want to consult. It depends on what I'm doing with it at the end. In this case, I was renting it out, okay? So I want to talk to the kitchen fitter, the person that actually like designs the kitchen and everything. And I want to talk to the stylist to make sure that what we're making is pretty and everything's going to actually be appealing to someone that's going to rent it, also with the revaluing process. And then the last one in this case, I want to talk to the property manager to find out what does a tenant in this area really want in the kitchen. We need to balance all of those three and make sure that all three of them aren't running away with you because it's your job when you're renovating to control the budget. Now I had this bloke Luke come out from Bunnings, it's a service that they offer, it's like 100 bucks and they'll basically help you fit the kitchen and design the kitchen. Well not fit and install but like design the actual kitchen. I also had Tia Willett from uh, Saving Grace. Now Tia is amazing, Tia and Jenny both do such amazing work when it comes to staging homes, when it comes to basically helping people get everything in the, that ready condition, sales condition, okay? But this wasn't for sales condition right now. This was just because I was wanting to pick her style brain and make sure this kitchen was looking as beautiful as possible. Because Luke's job is functionality, okay? Tia's job in this case is making it pretty. And the last day, a property manager as well. So I actually had Judy Harrow help me out when we're just talking about things that someone's really gonna want if they're gonna rent this place out. 
So balancing all three of these opinions is exactly that. It's a balancing act, okay? So Luke is wanting to put drawers everywhere. I don't want drawers everywhere because drawers are just going to increase my cost, okay? There are certain things Tia was wanting to do as far as overhead cupboards, but she actually came up with this great idea. I'm pretty sure it was Tia. Apologies if it was you, Luke, but I think it was Tia. But actually getting overhead cupboards, but putting them down onto the ground here because these are only 300 deep. So originally there were 600 deep cupboards. This huge pantry, no, wait here. This huge pantry over here and it just really boxed in the room. As soon as you walked in, you just felt like you had no space. But by putting an overhead cupboard on the ground, it still gave us some bench space and allowed us to still put shelving up on this side. It's just, creative little ideas like this can make the biggest difference. I mean, both with the budget, it's actually a really cost-effective way of putting extra storage, extra bench space here, and plus on the shelving side of things, but also not just the, the, the budget, the overall look and feel. When you now walk into this room, it feels more like a whole kitchen area. Whereas if that had just been over here, I would have just felt like we had a little L-shaped kitchen look. You know what I mean? So it does really make a difference. So I think all I'm trying to say is when you're planning your kitchen, please put as much time as you can into planning it. Don't just go with one person's opinion. If you're gonna sell it, talk to a sales agent, okay? If you're in Adelaide, I will quite happily talk with you, okay? I'm sure I've got my number somewhere in the mix. Whatever state you're in, talk to the agent that actually sells in that area, that understands renovation, understands what the market actually wants. If you're gonna rent, make sure you're talking to a renting agent, a letting agent, right? Because it's gonna make a huge difference to your end result. Because pretty isn't profit, okay? I wanna say that again, pretty isn't profit. It's about making sure that it hits the mark budget-wise, it hits the mark style-wise, but it also hits the mark functional-wise, okay? Anyway, that's too much of a rant, let's move on. Okay, then just after we got all of the design and everything done, we hit a little bit of a snag. I had Barry from BJ Plumbing actually come out. Uh, he was actually gonna do everything I needed done with the gas side of things, but what we found out was the gas actually wanted to leak. Now, this, it, it could have been a nothing problem, but it also could have been a huge problem cost-wise, okay? So basically what Barry and I figured out was that it was probably gonna cost anywhere up to a couple of grand to actually chase the leak, depending on where the leak was gonna be. Or, because all we had that was actually gas in the entire property was the stove and the hot water service, which the hot water service wasn't in the best of shapes, we thought, why don't we just disconnect the gas? So I, I ended up getting a new hot water service that was actually on a, a rebate. It's actually called a heat pump. This thing was like $1,000 fully installed, which I don't know if they're still running that rebate right now, but was pretty damn good. But anyway, one of the things I actually did really enjoy about doing the, the floors in the kitchen and everything was my dad actually came to help. So thank you so much, Bruce Boy. Absolutely love it when you come to help out one of the projects. Now, while all the demolition and everything else had happened in the kitchen, the floors were getting done, the, the walls were getting back to being walls again. We got the quote in, hold on, that says under his belly. <laughs> we got the quote in for the actual kitchen itself. Now, the original quote after speaking with Luke about this came into four, I'm gonna put this up on the screen, but $4,627.37, right? Which still, again, isn't bad, but we're just talking cabinetry that didn't include bench tops, that didn't include any kind of fittings or anything. So I had to play with these numbers to make sure that they could work better than that because I wasn't happy with that as an overall because I had five grand to spend on the whole kitchen, not just on the cabinets, all right? So the first thing I did was change the splashback. Originally, we were talking about this kind of Perspex uh, splashback, and that was, $1,047 for just splash back along here and here. I just thought I don't need to spend that much. I think we ended up spending uh, $350, I think it was, for, and that was getting Bill, again, Bill from Darlington Tiling to actually do the tiling work and the tiles. It was like a much cheaper option. Uh, the other thing, and this is something that I know some people are gonna say I'm not doing it properly, but to me, it just makes perfect sense. See, cabinet back here, pantry, and panels, okay? That pantry itself, is $242 for the actual pantry, right? Get this, now the end panels on either side of that pantry, which is there, there, and there, both, both of those, for the two end panels, it was gonna be $478. It was double the price, just about, of the actual pantry itself, just to get end panels on there. So naturally, boom, that got a flick off the budget. I also just changed a few little simple things as well. Like the, the door handles were just over $90 as well. Now I know I could get these handles here for something like $2 each. So it ended up costing me something like $24 to get the handles done. That's not a huge saving, but the point of it is, is just always watch these little details because when you add them up, they, they will make a difference. And if you have a lot of little savings over the course of an entire project, it's gonna make a huge difference. So even that was only like, what, what is that? 50, 60, I don't, I don't know, 90, 24. 
Well, it's like a $70 saving, so it's still 70 bucks. If I'm just hand you 70 bucks, you know, like, oh, you, you, you would be like, oh, thank you, I thank you for the $70. So same, same thing, same saving. So all up, the kitchen ended up coming to around $2,800 for all of the cabinetry work and the door handles, including the hinges as well. Not the bench tops just yet, but we'll get to that in a second. So, and another big thank you to James, again, for coming out and helping. Again, you're amazing. Uh, for actually putting all of the cabinets together. And we don't actually have any footage of this. Him and I actually just sat out the back in the little pergola area one night and just had a couple of drinks and just put all of the cabinets together. So the next step was basically just bringing them back inside and making sure that they're actually just set up nicely. Now I'm gonna take a time lapse of this next time because this, I can't stress this enough, you really need to get this right, okay? Because your walls are almost never level. You, you wanna make sure you've got all the right shims, you've got all the right equipment to actually get the cabinets exactly where they need to be, okay? So now, once all of the cabinets were in the right spot, oh, and actually the Bunnings video on that is surprisingly pretty helpful. So I, I think I might even leave a, a description in the link below, okay? Just on how to get the cabinets on the walls and in the right spot. So once all these cabinets are in, it was kind of starting to take shape. It was looking a little bit more kitchen -y, okay? One of the things that I personally struggled with was this thing here, this overhead cabinet. I actually had to make my own little tool. It almost took me like half a day to get that thing in because it was just, yeah, and I tried to stand the stand. I ended up buying a stand the stand, even though I think they're overpriced, but they're good. They're only 90 centimeters, so I needed something that, the memory was 160 something, or whatever it was. The next step was getting the appliances. So for this, I actually had a range hood left over from another house that I worked on that I didn't end up putting it in. So I mean, technically that was I think $150, $148, something along those lines. And now my oven and my stove top that I was looking at, I, I didn't really want to spend more than sort of six, $700. I actually ended up going to Bunnings. I go to Bunnings all the time and I just always check those little middle bits. So I ended up chatting with this young lady that said that had some, it was like clearance stock, it wasn't actually ex-demo, um, and there were $1,000 units for, for the whole thing. So I ended up actually getting it down to $468 for memory or something along those lines, um, just because they wanted to get rid of them. Looking at $468 and $150 for the range hood. So I was pretty happy with those prices. So I ended up getting Nandor from NS Starter and Electrical to help out as far as all the sparky works concerned. But it was a little bit more getting the oven installed or hooked up because I did the installation that he did all of the electrical work. I don't want to touch electrical stuff. Um, but there was something that he had to do back to the box. So I think he had to put a new circuit in, whatever it was. It ended up costing a little bit more. I think it was around $550 to get him to do all of his magical stuff at the day. So something that I personally like to do with my kitchen renovations is actually use hardwood bench tops, okay? Hardwood bench tops, generally they're more cost effective. I think they look nicer. And also, as long as you take care of them and actually seal them up properly, they're pretty well lasting. So anyone says that, yeah, but they can stain and scratch, and <clears throat> yeah, of course they can. So can laminate. If you put something hot on laminate, it just melts anything, right? But I got all of the bench tops for this done for $198, so I was really happy with that. It was another $50 for the actual sealer, like the, the lacquer that you have to put over them. Really happy with that, and I think the white on wood just really looks nice together, they complement each other. So once the bench tops were on, lacquered, sealed, we had handles on the doors, we had appliances in, we had a sink in, I think the sink was around $120. Actually, you know what, let's just read through a break now. Let's just, blah, 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 blah. All right, you know what, let's just read through a break now. Okay, so all up with this, so all up with this kitchen. The cabinets cost $2,800. The oven and cooktop cost $467 combined. The range hood was four, oh, range hood was $149. The sink cost me $110. The taps here, and they're, I think they're nice looking taps as well, also matching the ones that I did in the bathroom. If you're interested in the bathroom as well, click the link below, we've got a full renovation breakdown on the bathroom video. So they were $80 for the, you want know the bathroom taps? No, yeah. they were $80 for the, the taps in the, Where's that word gone? Sink, they're $80 for the taps in the sink. Uh, bench tops were $198. Then we've got the bench top sealer. That was another $49, I'll we'll call it 50. Uh, tiles and the tiling will both come in at $380. Okay, now the only thing that, I wanted to do that cool subway look, but I didn't do it. Like, there's a subway style, but the black grout and the white tile looks really cool at the moment. But I thought if I go more black there, this place is gonna look like a freaking chessboard, okay? Black floor is already enough of a statement. So we kept it white grout there, but $380 for the tiling for the splash pack. And so it would have made a far cry from the, the $1,041 or whatever it was for the, the Perspex splash pack. That's gonna be more hard wearing as well. 
Now this is what I mean, it's just about juggling the numbers until it works. That shelving $45, but the shelving parts here, well, I'll cut to a few shots, they were off cuts from the bench tops that I already had. So I'm just reusing what I've already got, but making sure that we're still, we're giving a home to everything that we can. So the actual shelving brackets were $45. And then the sparking for Fernando to come in and connect everything up that he needed to do, that was another $550. So all up guys, we're looking at $4,828. For all of that, for all of that, for, for a kitchen, for a brand new kitchen, new appliances, new bench shops, new cupboards, new everything, it's, it's a fraction of the cost now this is a caboodle kitchen, okay? This isn't high-end, and by no means am I saying to do this. If you're in a high-end property, if you're in a double bay at Burnside or Turak or wherever you are, don't do this, it's, it's silly, okay? But if you're in like normal suburbia, look into these things, okay? Because it was pretty easy to put in. It's one of those things that, there's a few things that I, I learned from my mistakes with this, okay? In, in no way, shape or form am I pretending to be Mr. Noel when it comes to this kind of stuff. I very frequently say, I don't know what I'm doing and I make it up and learn it as I go along, okay? A few mistakes that I can just admit. Left-handed sink. Didn't know that came left-handed. <laughs> I, I don't know why I did that. And I figured this out after I silicon the thing in. Stupid mistake. I'll never be making that one again. And don't you either. I know you're probably laughing at me right now because apparently everyone knew that, apart from me. Uh, the other thing, when I was putting the, the actual stove top in, yeah, not stove, stove, yeah, stove, yeah. When I was putting the actual stove top in, I cut it to the exact, like, pshum, I was like being Mr. Ninja Laser. So it turns out that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to give that a little bit of room. Which then with the, the saw and ah, that, that was a headache actually then trying to get that actually in there, okay? Another little bit of an issue, but not a huge one. The walls not being plumb, that's actually something I learned on the first kitchen I did. So I've done a few kitchens now, but that's something that I, I really want to stress to you guys if you've never done one. Don't assume the wall's straight, because it's probably not. I feel very clean my teeth for that. But don't, don't think that the wall's going to be straight, because realistically, those things are like, yeah, more crooked than a politician a lot of the time. It's more of a Forrest Gump quote than an actual politician dig. Oh, the, the miter cut, okay? I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't cut the bench top right. Now, I just did a straight cut, it works, it's flush, it's all even, but it's not the proper minor angle cut, okay? I didn't feel confident doing that. The last thing I wanted to do was do the cut and then do it wrong and then do like 10 mil out and then there's a gap. I did a cut, it's a straight cut. If you're a cabinet maker, you will laugh at me, and yes, I know that, but it works. The kitchen works, it looks good, it's functional, it's gonna wear properly, the bench tops are solid, they're in there properly. Yeah, but I'm gonna learn how to do that properly because I really should be doing that the way that it's actually, you know, supposed to cut, okay? But you know, otherwise guys, I'm pretty proud of myself with this. I, I think that if I can do this, you can do this. And I hate it when people say that because oh, I can do this. But if, if, if I can though, seriously, like I, I'm, I'm not qualified, I, I'm not a carpenter. I, I'm a real estate agent, I'm a property investor. This, this here though, is, is construction work that I've taught myself of watching exactly what you're watching right now is YouTube videos just trying to get as much knowledge as I can and questioning everything as soon as someone says oh this is what it's going to cost why is it going to cost that is there a way we can do it cheaper how can we get that same look for more cost effective way or in a more cost effective way without compromising on the quality too much Keep asking those questions, because this could have so easily turned into a, a 10, 15,000 dollar kitchen. With, with, without any hesitation, it could have just happened so easily. You could end up spending another two or three thousand dollars just on the oven and cooktop. I mean, range hoods for a thousand dollars. They're not even super fancy ones. They're just nice looking range hoods. So make sure, again, you're just being really diligent with your budget. I'm gonna keep saying this, because it keeps coming back to budget. Always comes back to that budget control, right? And as soon as you save a little bit here, don't think, oh great, we can spend it there. That mentality is going to—it's just not going to work, okay? It's, it's going to work. It's going to work to a certain extent, but it's not going to work to actually really increase that profit at the end of a project, okay? This project all up. Really happy with the numbers on this, and, and the video for the full breakdown will be coming. I want to be as transparent as I can with these things, okay? Yeah, I think I think that's it, guys. Yeah, so all up, kitchen for $4,800, new kitchen. I'm happy with that, I hope you're happy with that. And I cannot wait to see yours. If you've actually watched this video and you've, you've actually started doing your kitchen, send it to me, okay? Info at pizzaandproperty.com. I want to see your handiwork. If you've got any troubles with it, 
PM me on Facebook, do whatever you gotta do, get in contact, it's 2020, you can get in contact however you want, right? We can all find each other pretty simply. But otherwise, have yourself an amazing week and stay awesome. So was the kitchen video what you thought it was gonna be? If it was, thumbs up. If it wasn't, brrr, thumbs down. Right, but either way, keep watching more videos. We got this one over here, that's an amazing one. This one over here, I feel like Mr. Miyagi. That one's even better, but maybe not as good as the subscribe button, I think it's going to be here. <laughs> you should totally click it, keep watching.